gold and silver are finally catching the attention of millennials and our next guest thinks that this could be a huge factor for driving prices going forward. Joining me today is Lobo Tigre of the Independent Speculator. Lobo, it's always a pleasure to have you back. Welcome. Yep, glad to be back with you. Robinhood, it's a platform um, where users can trade stocks and options and contracts for free, uh, ETFs as well. Tell us about how this is impacting the gold space. Your recent research suggests that a lot of millennials, the primary user base of Robinhood, are starting to catch on to gold and silver. Yes, indeed. Okay, to answer the question, let me actually rewind a little bit and put something out there that might be a little controversial to the audience. But I think the Bitcoin crowd and the Bitcoin craze actually did gold bugs a huge favor. Because for decades, really, uh, the typical gold investor understands that gold can't be printed, as now Bank of America is now saying. Uh, you know, we've known this since the 70s. We, we've been waiting for the demise of the dollar for all these years, knowing that they can't print forever. But we were like the lone voice out in the desert in the wilderness. Nobody wanted to listen to that. Everything's fine. Um, the advent of Bitcoin and the sort of sales case, the use case for Bitcoin convinced an entire generation of young people that actually there's something to be said for something that can be used as money that the governments can't print. And this has become part of the mindset. Young people today understand that there is a risk in calling something money that governments can create at will with no cost. That's completely different than anything we've seen before. So quick aside, I would love for the, the gold guys who hate Bitcoin and the Bitcoin guys who hate gold to stop fighting. If they want to have an enemy, you know, load the hate on the dollar. The dollar is the one that deserves their attention. But what I'm saying in, in response to your question is that obviously the Bitcoin thing very popular with young people. The the huge ramp up in 2017 caught their attention. A lot of young millionaires out there. And now along comes Robin Hood that makes it cheap, uh, free, uh, and easy for anybody, including young people. You know, it's an app on your phone that's just right for the younger generations uh, to trade in other things. So all these people, they, they, they get that there's something wrong with paper money, or it's not even on paper anymore, and they get that trading can make you a lot of money, and they're looking for the next Bitcoin 2017. I've made the case for years, really, since 2017, that gold can be that, and that it should and will catch young people's attention when it starts going. And that's what my latest research shows now. It is, in fact, starting to happen. It's very exciting. We're going to show the viewer some of these charts here that you put out. Can you walk us through these charts? Explain the magnitude of increase just on a user activity basis uh, that really struck out to you, Lobo. Right, so the first thing to say is this is still just starting. If you look at something like Tesla, it's got half a million users uh, buying Tesla stock, individual separate investors buying Tesla stock. Obviously very, very popular. Uh, with gold, it's in gold stocks, it's nowhere near that much. If you look at the most obvious go-to in the space, that would be the GLD ETF. It's the first thing for anybody, you know, doesn't want to pick a company, doesn't know much about gold, doesn't want to hold the physical stuff. They don't get that yet. Uh, the GLD is the first go-to place, and it has over 25,000 uh, individual users on Robinhood buying it now. But the really significant thing is that this is a, a, a very vertical leap. It's gone to 25,000 from almost nothing a year ago, I mean, practically speaking. And very significantly to me, as gold has been breaking out towards its new records, right? We're now close, you know, stone's throw from new uh, all-time highs. And this is catching a lot of attention. It's making headlines. And you can see this in the very recent ramp up in Robinhood users. And one tiny detail, I just checked it this morning, quite interesting to me. You've seen the number of users following the price upwards. Like they're, they're paying attention. They get it. They see it. They want in. Uh, most recently, in the last couple of days, you've seen the number of users accelerating faster than the price. That means these Robinhood users are trying to get ahead of the curve, that they see higher prices ahead and they are speculating accordingly. I, I think this is all very fantastic news for the gold market. So my first question to you, Lobo, is why is this trend significant? We all know that baby boomers have more wealth, they have more money to invest. Millennials are getting older, they're coming out of, you know, they're coming out of school, getting into the workforce, sure, but a lot of them are still paying off student debts, they don't have as much money as the baby boomers and you know older generations. Why is this trend, why does it even matter? Well, first and foremost, if it, 
actually, let me, let me revise that. <laughs> I was going to say something else, which is actually second most. The first and foremost thing is that the younger generation is by definition new to the space and a class of generalist investors. These are not people who have been, you know, hoarding gold and guns out in the desert somewhere or in Idaho in their cabin for decades, you know, waiting for the world to end. These are young people, you know, many of them weren't even alive during the last big uh, gold run up in 1980. So <laughs> it's really significant. It's an entirely new audience. It's an entirely new large audience. They may not have a lot of money yet, but millennials, these are not children anymore. Millennials are, are now coming into wealth and power, and I would not underestimate the buying capacity of this generation and the next one. These people have disposable income. On average, they have fewer obligations and responsibilities than those of us in the more in the middle of our lives with you know kids and college tuitions and all these kinds of things on our plates. So I would actually push back and say, I think they may have more debts, they may have uh, other issues on their plates, but I think they actually have perhaps more not just disposable income, but more cash that they're willing to speculate with than a lot mm -hmm. of their elder peers. So I think that's important. But the big thing is that this is, by definition, again, new people, not gold bugs. These are generalists. And the one thing that we've been waiting for for a long time, you know, really since the bottom in 2015, is for not just the industry insiders and the specialists and the diehard gold and silver bugs, but for generalist investors to get in on this story. And that's what this is a sign of. These people are, by definition, generalists, and they're piling in. And we see headlines on the Wall Street Journal today about silver, Yahoo Finance, another hangout of young people. Big article yesterday about gold miners, not just the, the metal itself, getting attention from Wall Street that it's been lacking. So we are starting to see generalist attention here, just starting. And it is, in a way, maybe a potential contrary indicator at the top. But I don't think we're anywhere near the top. I think it's just getting going. It's very exciting. So it's interesting you brought up the story because I'm a millennial myself and most of my friends are millennials. And admittedly, none of my peers really cared about the gold space until recently. I've been getting a few phone calls from people that I know asking me about gold and silver. And I'm wondering, and here's my question to you, Lobo, is what is it about the markets today uh, that is driving retail investors in my age group to a sector that previously they hadn't cared before? Well, there's good news and bad news here, David. I, I have to say I, I have some concern about this. And to any millennials and younger people out there watching, um, I am not one of these guys who's going to jump up and down and say, bye, bye, bye. In fact, today, as you and I are speaking, David, gold just hit a new uh, multi-year high, over 1840 an ounce, silver over 21. I wouldn't buy anything today. It, you know, when, when things are going vertical and crazy like that, that's the time to be taking profits, not buying. So my answer to you is that younger people, you know, they're not stupid. They're smart and they see the opportunity. That's fantastic. But on average, of course, by definition, they lack experience. And I think they tend to chase momentum. That's the answer to your question. It's very evident to me, lots of FOMO, lots of momentum chasing. Uh, FOMO could be gold's very best friend this year. Fantastic if it gets a lot of people in who, who you know, are looking ahead and wanting to get in a, a before gold hits a new record high. You know, that's great. Uh, but it also, it's a double-edged sword. It's a risk for these people investing. If it, There's a chance that anybody buying today could be top-ticking this market d before a significant correction, and that will scare them and they will withdraw. So it's a risk to them if they chase momentum too much. It's also a risk to the market because generalist attention, you know, while you're the flavor of the day, that's great. Woohoo, all in, let's go. Yeah, but I as soon as that changes, boom, they, you know, that money, they're not going to stay loyal to gold. They're out. So watch out for the potential for corrections ahead and make use of them. I think there's a classic saying where if the cab driver is telling you about gold, you should probably sell it. Are you, is, that, is that the case now, you think? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's too early for that. I, I think that's something to watch for. That's something that's coming ahead. I mean, you're, you're the Kitco news guy. So, of course, your friends are asking you about gold and silver. I, I'll tell you, I've actually had similar experiences. I have taught uh, economics and entrepreneurship for almost 20 years to younger people in Eastern Europe. And I'm starting to get questions from them about gold and silver, too. So it is starting to catch on. But you and I, we're in the public eye. It's when the typical cab driver or bartender is talking to the other patrons at the bar about the ounces of gold they just bought or the stock they just bought. When really everybody is in, that's when you know that the, the, the contrarian alert should be going off in your mind that hmm, hmm, maybe this is starting to get toppy. And we're not there yet, you're saying? I don't think so. Not at all. Just starting. 
All right. So how do you feel about the current momentum right now? Uh, we're not overextended, you think? 1840, uh, you know, we're, we're near all-time highs. Well, I've published some research on this, too, that people can find at independentspeculator.com, and that is looking at how different this market is from before. And one of the things that's really caught my attention is as we've come up since the bottom in 2015, it's been very much a stair-step kind of thing. It almost round numbers, right? We held 1,300 for a while, then 1,400 for a while, then 15, then 16, almost at round numbers, now 18, and we've broken out very quickly uh, if this, if today's surge holds. And now, um, so what I'm saying is, it could just be that we're so close to the record that this is, you know, the market has the bit in its mouth and it just wants to go for that record. That's not a very scientific way of saying that. That is a possibility. If that's what happens next, you know, you could throw caution to the winds and come out ahead. But what I'm also saying is that the data for the last five years tells us that the market has been building, consolidating, building, consolidating, building, consolidating. We just had a breakout. The odds favor some consolidation, I think, and I think that's great for the people just coming on to it now because that means there should be buying opportunities ahead. And just real quick, by the way, that double-edged sword we talked about before, yeah, yeah. if generalists that are rushing in now rush out ahead while the fundamentals haven't changed, you know, Europe just announced $2 trillion more a stimulus. You know, the, the government in the United States is about to ask another rescue passage, passage, sorry, not ask, about to pass another rescue passage package. I'm getting too excited here, and I should calm down. Normally, I'm the due diligence guy. I'm the calm one. But the fundamentals are so strong, they're not changing anytime soon. What I'm saying is, if there's a, a bit of a panic, if there's a pullback and all these generalists rush back out again, it could create you know, a terrific buying opportunity for the people who get it, who understand what's going on. So this Robin Hood story that you've discussed, is that a short-term or longer-term indicator, you think? I think it's both. I think right now it shows FOMO and momentum chasing getting in, and that is fickle. As long as gold keeps going up, then I think that will continue, and I think it'll exacerbate. It'll, it'll be a multiplier for what's happening now. I think that happens on the correction side, too. Uh, but longer term, I, I think it's it can't be overstated how important it is that an entire younger generation, you know, they were trained by the Bitcoin mantra, and they're seeing it in gold now, and and they're taking it up. And, you know, you and I have been to these conferences where we see just a sea of silver hair. If that changes in the future to where it's more of a mix, I think that's extremely bullish longer term uh, for really all commodities, but very much the monetary metals. Can this story be applied to the broad equities as a whole? Because we're seeing equities rally. Uh, NASDAQ has already surpassed February highs. And, you know, Robinhood trading account activity has been surging on all fronts, not just in the gold sector. Are we seeing FOMO in the equity space as well? And if so, how do you feel about where we stand in terms of uh, valuations? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I got to tell you, anybody who tells you, oh, it's got to go higher because of all the money printing, we're going to Dow 30,000. Or anybody who says, oh, it's got to crash because the reality on Wall Street is the economy is terrible and it's going to go down to 20,000. Anybody who says they know the answer to that, just, uh, I'll be polite. I don't believe them. Nobody knows. It's not knowable. We are in uncharted waters. And anybody who tells you, I've got a chart in uncharted waters, don't listen to them, okay? That said, I got to say, right now, I, I, anybody that's betting on Wall Street going up and up and up, I get it. There's a reason for that. And I feel the FOMO myself. But that is not an investment. I wouldn't even dignify it by calling it a speculation. That is a gamble. It is so unknown what will happen next. Yeah, you can go to the gamble, and if the roulette wheel lands on your number, you make a bunch of money. That could happen this year if you bet on Wall Street. But the opposite could happen too, and nobody knows the difference. So my feeling right now is that we've gone from investing beyond speculating to just gambling on Wall Street now. And if you're going to gamble, that's fine. But understand that's what you're doing and the risks you're taking. Lobo, I've spoken to people I know personally who would gamble their entire life savings uh, on the opposite bet of what you just said. Basically, they're so certain that the Federal Reserve is going to bail out any bad news that the only possible thing you could do as an investor is to not fight the Fed, put all your savings. You know what? Savings is not enough. Leverage all your money, increase your margin account, put everything in a long position in the S&P and NASDAQ. What would you say to those people?
If I was a 20-year-old Robin Hooder with no kids, no debt, well, you know, most of them have college debt, but maybe maybe uh, Trump or Bernie and his, and his friends there in Biden camp will forgive his debt. I don't know. But if I was young and had no responsibilities, heck, maybe why not? You know, swing for the bleachers, maybe I'll come out ahead. But that's not me. And I'm not going to destroy my wealth uh, on a gamble like that. So I'll tell you very honestly, anybody out there who's thinking about following me in the future, odds are if, if the markets go up, I'm not going to be the guy who makes the most money this year. And my readers may not be the ones who make the most money this year because I am balancing risk and reward. I'm not interested in just reward, reward, reward. If that's the way fortunes can be made if you're lucky, and that's the way fortunes are lost if you're not lucky, and who's lucky all the time, right? So I, that that's my thing. I'm just, I'm not a gambler. I'm not interested in being a gambler. And, you know, my services, I think, should yeah. appeal to people who want to be rational, disciplined speculators, not wild gamblers. No, I, I understand your argument from a risk-reward um, standpoint, not putting all your eggs in one basket, but just from the standpoint of trusting the Fed so much that you would put your entire life savings, um, how much faith do you put on QE right now, driving the markets up? I think overall, I'm not going to dodge your question. Overall, I think that is a very sound premise. But again, we are in uncharted waters. Suppose this COVID thing heats up. Suppose it doesn't even wait for the second wave in the fall. We already have accelerating cases. What if the death toll really spikes up? What if people really start panicking? Uh, you know, what's booing Wall Street right now is not the actuality of the easy money making things better for companies. It's market psychology saying, oh, what the Fed's doing will be good for companies in the future. And therefore, we're going to be a forward looking market and get in ahead of that. It's all mass psychology. If that mass psychology reverses, which it could, and anybody who says it can't, just look at what happened in March. We have an example this year that markets can turn on a dime, not even give you the five cents change. That could happen. And if it does, that premise goes out the window. All it takes is that confidence to be significantly shaken. You could get a panic and we could get a sell off that dwarfs what happened in March, Very which good. by the way, would be a great opportunity for those who missed the gold rally earlier. How likely, last question, how likely is that sell-off to happen, you think? What are the drivers, what are the catalysts that you're looking for that, that could push that price down? I'm going to, you know, we're, since we're talking about millennials, I got to say, dude, I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you, we're in uncharted waters, uncharted. I don't have a chart and I don't believe anybody who says they do. I, I'm not going to give you odds on that. I think the card is in the deck and the other one for the ramp up is two. And, you know, good mm -hmm. luck to anybody who thinks they know for sure. Thank you very much, Lobo, for your thoughts today. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, David. And thank you for watching Kitco News. We'll have more for you. Stay tuned.